So I painted a little bit of colour behind this fold to get the setting. I've got the, here's the photograph. Okay, this fold has got a lovely smooth coat. It's only um, a week or two old. Um, I've actually done a study of this hole and painted it in um, on a large, large canvas. So I'm just mixing up burnt sienna and raw sienna, a little bit of water on the brush, but only the minimum, just to sort of put this base middle tone colour in. Here it goes. Very simple. A little bit more, you know, a little bit more raw sienna in some areas than others, and I'm going to make lots of adjustments, make lighter shades of this and darker shades in a minute. So just getting that first colour on. There's also there's a huge psychological advantage, isn't there? Once you've got some colour down, the painting seems to take a, on its own sort of momentum. Once you get a bit of colour on your canvas, on your paper, it, it gets you in the mood. So I've just gone slightly lighter on the face there, slightly lighter on its four quarters there. So just putting a bit of white into my raw sienna and let's go a bit lighter on the top, top line as well. So I'm just using a very very cheap quality, like an old school brush, hog brush, no, nothing grand here. If you keep it moist, it will produce a nice brush stroke effect. I want the brush strokes to show in this, so using, you want to, if you've got them, use hog brushes, not sable brushes or synthetic brushes, because although it's got a smooth coat, the the main and, the, well, and so the other areas there are the brush strokes will reveal the, the coat. So I started a little bit dark and I'm already just coming back a little bit lighter. There we go, it's got a lovely sort of tan colour. Um, the legs actually change colour, they go to a sort of creamier colour. So I've got a bit of yellow, oak and white to pick those out. So yellow oak and white, just where, where they are lights, at the, the, um, the back, the, the, other, the legs on the other side of the animal are in shadow. So just picking out little key bits of light. Yep. Let's have a clean up and let's go into some burnt umber now. And burnt sienna together to produce the, this dark colour. So just quick laying of all the main colours. So I'll keep doing that and come back to you in a second. Okay, I'm just carrying on with this dark so burnt umber ultramarine. And if you put a little bit more water on your brush you can even do this, you can get to the ribs. Stick them up over the First colour, if you can just get a sense of the spacing of the ribs, because they're skinny things when they're so young. Carry on. Might need a slightly smaller brush than this one to do that. Look how these strong sunlight is showing these lovely shadows across the back legs here, so you get a real sense of the muscles. Now if you, when you're working with paint, not too much of it at a time like this, simple trick, if I keep trying to brush that colour out with a same brush, it will just spread. So I'm just going to take a clean brush, just push that paint back and smooth off that edge. So that gives a more natural, softer shape to that shadow. So you put the shadow in, just go back to it and re reinforcing it, and then you soften one edge or the other edge depending on the type of shadow because the cast shadows are often very sharp like the cast shadow from that ear onto the forehead of the 
only um, fold, very sharp, but the modelling shadow, such as the one that's just underneath the tummy here, this edge could be softer. So I put the colour on and then with this brush I just soften the edge. So it's not such a sharp transition. And the back legs here, yeah, a bit darker than the ones coming towards us, so a little bit more blue and brown. Some areas are darker than others. A little fold like this, you really do, do get to understand the anatomy of the horse. It's more on display here almost because they've got, they're not plump, they haven't got, there's nothing hiding the bone structure, the skeleton is sort of showing through the form of the animal. So you, do, you can really learn what's going on. Right, let's use my smaller brush now. So I just, this I will use some water on it, it's my little detail brush, so I can now get into these thinner edges just to produce a little bit more control. Actually I need to taper it in, just follow my drawing. And you can also use a brush like this just to add some shadows down the front of this leg. And into the vet locks and down into the hooves. I need to move my palettes just getting in the way. Go back to my brown brush to put the main dark in here. You notice I painted though that strong shadows because their ponies are right by a little copse of trees, and all the shadows behind create a nice little abstract pattern, which I have simplified, but I'm just exploiting it. their little tails just starting to push out a bit now oh, very dark sort of charcoal -y brown but catching the light at the back here quite grey so putting a little bit of white in with my brown blue mixture a bit too much blue so just alter the balance but I still need a bit more white just create, create a little bit of So let's just see what details we need to sort out. We've got a little bit of information around the muzzle here, a little bit of soft grey. So all the greys I'm mixing are a mixture of brown and blue, so mostly either burnt umber and ultramarine or burnt sienna and ultramarine, which will produce a less dark grey. the shade in here. So I could carry on and do lots of little tweaks into this just to produce all these little contrasts but I'll show you um, with this uh, video, I'll show you a picture that I painted on a larger scale of this fold so you can see how, and it's an acrylic painting just like I'm using here. It looks a bit like an oil, but then that's how I normally paint. Either in oils or acrylics to look like oils. So you can get the you'll get that as well, just so you can see how with a little bit more care and again there's some more pale shades in here. You notice how this you know these hot brushes do pick up and just splurge out, they produce these little brush strokes which do suggest the actual hairs of the animal. There's, by the way there's some reflected light down here, I'm painting underneath here, yeah, a little bit of orange going into the mixture now. Okay, just down underneath in there. And I'm going to show that up by putting a little bit of dark background down in here, 
put another shadow here so it shows that colour up a bit better. Another tree shadow. And just the last couple of things. A little bit of a little bit of detail coming around the eyelid here, a little bit of a vein here, a little bit of detail in the features. A little bit more accuracy just around the nostril here. Every horse has got a different shaped muzzle. It's one way you can tell them apart in the paddock. I thought you'd want to know that. You probably know that already. So a little detail brush just for the nostrils could be a bit bigger. And of course, ah, I've forgotten my mane. Here we go, back to my burnt umber. And ultramarine, actually I'm going to use burnt sienna and ultramarine this time because it's not quite so dark. So here we go, the mane. Place it on the top of the neck, on top of the head here, and just flick upwards. I'm doing the sort of darker shade of it first. I'm going to have to redefine the top of the neck in a sec. Flick it upwards and then we go for a slightly paler shade using a bit more white into that mixture. Then a slightly paler shade coming back down the other way. And then as I've slightly lost that top line through the neck, go back to my original mixture raw sienna with a bit of yellow open white. and push that line back into place. Clean the brush. And just connect that colour. One new forest foal. Who's to finish off? I'll do them in a sec and send you the photograph. Thank you for watching.